this year Ethereum is uh, switching to proof of stake, um, and uh, proof of stake is better and more secure than proof of work. And so after the merge, Ethereum will actually be the most secure base layer. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, one of the biggest upgrades in the history of crypto is coming our way. And I am, of course, talking about Ethereum 2.0, or as it's now known, the merge. This upgrade will see Ethereum changing its entire consensus mechanism from the proof of work mining to proof of stake validating. So what I think people most want to know right now is when. When is the merge happening? Will Ethereum truly become the world's most secure base layer? And when will scaling finally come to Ethereum? And so in this video, we'll be looking at the launch of the merge. What is it that still needs to be done? And when exactly is the merge happening? Then on to Ethereum's roadmap and Vitalik will explain everything that's coming to Ethereum over the next couple of years. And then we'll finish up with decentralization. You see, Ethereum chose decentralization over scaling initially, but there must be a good reason, right? Well, Vitalik explains why decentralization matters so much. As always, if you do enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like. Always appreciated. Okay, so one of the biggest upgrades in the history of crypto is coming our way. So what's left to be done and when is the merge actually happening? Ready? Let's do this. I mean, I think at this point, it basically is testing, right? And like at, at this point, um, you know, there are already some um, like basic test nets and like full implementations of uh, like everything that needs to happen for the merge. Like there's uh, implementations of the consensus clients. There was uh, implementations of the like what we call execution clients now. So like Geth and Nethermind are the, like, the bigger ones. Um, and uh, Peter Salagi, the lead uh, get, dev of uh, Geth, uh, just like, tweeted out a few days ago that like Geth is basically one PR away from being uh, uh, ready for the merge, right? So like, PR means pull request. It's just basically a big piece of code that gets uh, kind of suggested to be added to um, the, the Geth project, and then it'll actually be uh, added and included at some point uh, fairly soon. Um, so the, but obviously like there, there's still quite a bit of testing left to go. Um, the piece that has seen like the least testing and where there's still some finishing touches uh, being done on right now is the, like in what we call the initial sync process. So this is like when a node joins the network for the first time. Then, like, how do they, yeah, like, de basically download the kind of what the existing states, so like, what the existing like account balances, contracts, code, and all of those things are, um, mm -hmm. so that they can then kind of be part of the network and uh, go from there. And there's just like some subtleties and kind of the, the interaction between you know how the proof, the formerly proof of work side does it, and how the proof of stake side does it. Um, so, like, a bunch of uh, a bunch of technical stuff there, though, also huge amounts of progress uh, being made on it. Um, so I think generally people are feeling uh, very good about the merge right now. It's just uh, you know, a bunch of technical work, a bunch of testing, um, a bunch more testing. Um, and uh, you know, hopefully we're going to be merging pretty soon. Um, I mean, some people are saying June, some people say, uh, saying July or August, I don't know. So the good news is that pretty much everything is done and all that's left is a whole bunch of testing. And think about it, the merge is going to impact hundreds of applications, billions of dollars, there's over 4,000 different Ethereum developers and pretty much every single pair of eyes involved in crypto in any way is going to be watching. Hashtag no pressure. And as of right now, the launch date will either be June, July, or August, so basically Q3. Okay, next up, what does the roadmap look like for Ethereum? And if you didn't know, the merge is just the first part of a five-part plan put together by Vitalik. Now, what's interesting is that for the big institutions, the merge is actually a very important part of what makes Ethereum investable, as one of the big buzzwords in the traditional finance space is ESG, E being environment. And when Ethereum switches over from proof of work to proof of stake, the energy usage of the network is going to drop by around 99%, so a major green flag. 
But that's not the only big change happening to Ethereum. You see, when Ethereum switches over to proof of stake, it's also going to affect Ethereum's inflation rate, and Ethereum will become deflationary. Another massive green flag for big institutions. However, I'm guessing for the vast majority of people watching this right now, it is the scaling part of Ethereum that people care about most. So let's take a quick snapshot look at Ethereum's roadmap. I guess the closest thing uh, we have to that is uh, gonna, like summarized in that uh, diagram, the the roadmap diagram that I tweeted out uh, back in mm -hmm. December. This was the one that talked about you kind know, of the five buckets that uh, at least like I used to organize um, what was uh, left to be done. Where you had the merge, which was uh, basically proof of stake, uh, the surge, which is uh, increasing cap uh, the capacity of the chain, basically doing sharding and uh, doing a little bit more stuff before that and, and some more stuff after that. Then there is the verge, which is uh, vertical trees, which are basically a technology that makes it easier to validate the chain. Um, mm -hmm. So like nodes don't have to kind of be so heavy and require like as big computers as before. Um, then there's the purge, which is um, like, making the chain a kind of lighter and making the code lighter by not requiring like every node in the network to process and store all of the old history. Um, mm -hmm. And then there is like the splurge, which is just everything else. There's a lot of different buckets there, right? Like there's mm -hmm. like upgrades to the EVM, there's proposer builder separation, and there's like this uh, fairly long and like a list of uh, just various miscellaneous kind of uh, um, buzzwords and just fun items of uh, different kinds. Um, and then, like, there's longer term things like ZK Snarks, which are going to be probably everywhere in the Ethereum protocol five or 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, that list of uh, things, right? Like, just switch to proof of stake, um, add sharding. Um, so we have some scaling, uh, make sure we have good roll ups that are actually um, taking advantage of the sharding. Um, you know, make it easier for people to run nodes, make sure that we don't, like, centralize as a result of MEV and those kinds of issues. Um, Try to make the protocol less complex um, instead of uh, more complex over time, um, and then you know make the yeah, EVM better. Like I think if we do all of those um, and we just do the things that we know that we have, that, that we have to do today, then like Ethereum is in a place where if nothing else is uh, done, even like even after that, then like, we're already in a great place, right? So a five-step roadmap for getting Ethereum from where it is today over to proof of stake, to ramping up the speed and getting all the code simpler and lighter. Now, the only other thing I would point out is for the average investor. And I totally get it that with Ethereum's gas fees and scaling issues right now, it can be frustrating, especially when there's competitors that seem to be offering this right now. But just remember that Ethereum as of right now is mainly being used by large investors, institutions and corporations. And I can tell you that coming from the corporate world myself, it is very common for large upgrades to take one to two years. And so big institutions will have way more understanding and patience when it comes to these sorts of things. And I don't think something as big as Ethereum will be killed off in the next six to 12 months. And yes, they may continue to take some market share, but the entire market is growing anyway, so I don't think it's a major problem. Okay, and this brings us nicely on to the final segment, and this is all about decentralization. Now, the reason Ethereum doesn't have super high transaction speeds and super low gas fees is because they led with decentralization first over scaling. And although many competitors claim to be decentralized, it's really not to the same degree. So why is decentralization important and why should people care? Take a look. You know, decentralization is uh, one of those things that's like difficult to understand why it's important until suddenly it becomes uh, really obvious why it's important, um, mm -hmm. right? I think it's uh, like the most important um, thing is just like being able to like build on a platform and an ecosystem where like you know it's not you know, just going to go in some completely different uh, direction that like breaks everything, um, er everything that you were trying to uh, build on top of it, like just uh, because it's, uh, you know, in 
some small group group of people's interests, right? Or even just because like some group of people get lazy and decide to like stop um, um, stop maintaining something that they were maintaining. Um, so, like from de- decentralization um, being about um, long term stability, of is uh, I think something that's uh, um, really important. A lot of these examples of like you know people building on top of uh, like Twitter or Facebook, and then and they uh, built entire businesses around the APIs of these companies, and then suddenly the API like the the companies themselves decided that like oh you know they they'll shut down their those APIs like just. Because they uh, often just, like wants to release their own competitor, um, or like just for whatever other not very good reason, um, and like these people's life's work just ends up being uh, like kind of completely destroyed, right? And like even if that doesn't uh, happen, then like when these things become like very single, like these single central points of failure, then often there end up being these other forces that end up like, that that end up leaning on them, right? Like often. Um, centralized companies would just decide to like not serve entire countries because they just decide that you know that entire country is like too much of a money laundering risk or whatever and like that's like something that ends up you know like like hurting and like excluding often hundreds of millions of people right um what i think would like very easily emerge if ever if, if just everything depended on centralization um, where there's like five different people in between every transaction, and if you just lean on any one of the five hard enough, um, then like you, you know, people can just lose their ability to transact is uh, something that's important. Mm-hmm. And like even in the uh, absence of uh, that kind of pressure, um, I think uh, just creating things where you know that you th- they will keep existing in the same form five years from now is something that a lot of people just like underrate and that I think are like really valuable, right? Like what if I want to, you know, build some financial thing and I want to build my financial thing on top of Uniswap because my financial thing needs just like some ability to trade tokens around, then like it, I would feel much easier if I knew that Uniswap would actually exist like five years from now or 10 years from now, right? Um, because otherwise like, for every single dependency that I add, I'm basically taking on the responsibility that like, oh, they might decide to like change or disappear and then I'll have to scramble and, fig- and figure out some new thing. Ethereum 2.0, aka the merge, is finally on its way. It's now in the final testing stages and should be with us either June, July or August. One of the huge benefits this will bring is the huge drop in energy usage by the network and this is still one of the biggest complaints of Bitcoin and proof of work, as energy usage will be dropping by about 99%. The second big benefit is that according to ultrasound.money, Ethereum will be going deflationary, meaning the supply will slowly be decreasing, which even beats Bitcoin's fixed supply, which in itself is very valuable. According to Vitalik, proof of stake is more secure, it's better than proof of work, and it will make Ethereum the world's most secure base layer. After the merge, the next big focus, which is probably what the vast majority of people watching this care about most, and that is scaling. Sharding is the tech that's going to do it, and when combined with layer twos, this is how Ethereum gets to 100,000 transactions per second. And decentralization is one of those things that's difficult to understand why it's important, until it becomes obvious why it's important. And one of the big benefits of decentralization is that it'll be replacing people with computers and code, as it's always people that tend to screw things up, and it'll make sure that anything being built on Ethereum will be around 10, 20, 50 years from now. So there you are guys, hope you enjoyed. What do you think about this upcoming merge? Any questions or comments, let me know below. But for now, just to say, if you did enjoy anything in the video, then drop a like and a big thank you to everyone who does. If you haven't yet subscribed, click below and join us. Got some great videos coming up that you don't wanna miss. Okay, cheers guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.